Alright guys, in the last video, we discussed the four steps to fetch data using HTTP. In this video, let's implement them. The first step is to make a GET request from the employee service. Now in Angular 5, we see a change in the module responsible for HTTP. Till Angular version 4, we were using the HTTP module. But from version 5, we use the HTTP client module. The HTTP client module provides a simplified API for HTTP functionality for use with Angular applications. Let's go ahead and import it into our application. So go back to Visual Studio Code. In the app module, we are going to have import HTTP client module from angular slash common slash HTTP and add it to the imports array so that the HTTP client module is accessible within the app module. Now by importing the HTTP client module, we are also registering the HTTP service with Angular's injector. We don't have to explicitly register it by adding it to the provider's metadata. The HTTP client module will do that for us. And now to use HTTP in our employee service class, we declare it as a dependency in the constructor. So in the employee service class, in the constructor, type private HTTP of type HTTP client and make sure to import HTTP client as well. So we now have a local variable HTTP which we can use to refer to an instance of HTTP client. So we are ready to make a GET request to fetch data using HTTP. So in the get employees method, let's make the request. Return this.http.get. Now the get request takes in a URL as its argument. Now because we don't have an actual working web server and it doesn't seem practical to start a web server to serve up four lines of employee data, for our example, let's fetch the data from a file which we assume to be on a web server. So within the project folder, in the source folder, within the assets folder, I've created a new folder called data and within the data folder, I've created an employees.json file that contains our employee data. We will serve the data from this file instead of an actual web server. So back in our employee service, I'm going to create a new property. Private underscore URL of type string, which points to assets data employees.json. And in the get request, let's use this URL. This dot underscore URL. In future, if you do have a working web server, you can just replace this URL to point to that web server the application will still work as expected. So our first step is now complete. We have made a GET request from the employee service. The next step is to cast the observable which we receive as response to an employee array. Now if you hover over the GET method, you can see that it returns an observable. But for our application, this observable needs to be cast into a format that represents an array of employees. So for that, let's first create an employee interface. In the app folder, create a new file, employee.ts, and then add the code for an employee interface. So export interface iEmployee. Now each employee has an ID, a name, and an age. Perfect. We now have an employee type that the observable can be cast into. So let's go back to employee service. I'm gonna add a type to the get request. This is going to be an array of I employee and also make sure to import I employee. And the get employees method will return an observable of type employee array. And make sure to import observable from RxJS as well. So that completes our second step. We have cast the observable into an employee array. The third step is to subscribe to the observable from the employee list and employee detail component. 
And the fourth step is to assign the employee array to a local variable. So let's implement both these steps together. Go back to Visual Studio Code and go to employee list component. Here in the ng on init method, we are going to call the get employees method and then subscribe to the observable. So I'm going to remove this assignment and instead we are going to subscribe to the observable returned by the get employees method. So dot subscribe. The first argument to the subscribe method is going to be a fat arrow function that assigns the data received from the observable to this local employees property. So the argument is going to be data followed by the fat arrow syntax and then this dot employees is equal to data. The left hand side is basically the argument to the function and the right hand side is the body of the function. We are assigning the employee data to the employees property. Let me explain what exactly is going on in the employee list component. We have an instance of the employee service. We use this to call the get employees method. This method returns an observable. So to receive data, we need to subscribe to it. Once we subscribe to the observable, the employee data arrives asynchronously. We assign that data to our class property using the fat arrow syntax. So let's do the same in employee detail component as well. Save this and refresh and you can see that the application is still intact. I have even added an extra employee in the JSON file just to make sure that we are in fact serving the data from the file using HTTP and not hard-coded data from the employee service. Alright, let me quickly summarize what we have done. First, we have included the HTTP client module in our application. Next, we inject it as a dependency in the employee service. So now we have an instance of HTTP client which we can refer to with the HTTP variable. We invoke the get method passing the URL where the request has to be made. And this is nothing but the file employees.json. Now the get method returns an observable but we need to convert it into a type usable in our application. So we create an employee interface and cast the observable into an array of employees. Now we have a method get employees in employee service that returns an observable. But the observable doesn't provide the data unless someone subscribes to it. So in the employee list and employee detail components, we subscribe to it. From the observable, we get the employee data asynchronously. We assign that data to a property in the component class and bind it to the view. And that is how we fetch data using HTTP. Alright, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.